a warning. This segment is not going to be nearly long enough because I'm hungry, and we are here with gorgeous food and wine and the gorgeous ambassador of entertaining, Porter William Brooks. Welcome. How are you, David? I'm really hungry. Thank you for having me. This has been way too long. Way too long. How many years in coming? Uh, well, I'm uh, too many. I don't know. We're going to be totally self-serving today. Absolutely. Aren't we? Well, I mean, you know, what is better than great cheese and great wine, and you know, know. the and two good, of us here good talking friends, about it. right? Is yeah. that in San Francisco? You know, tell us. For those who aren't familiar with you, which yeah. I find hard to believe, you know, how long have you been the ambassador of entertaining? Well, I think it's kind of self-proclaimed. <laughs> Maybe that came from <laughs> from from City Hall. Um, we started the show about four years ago. Uh -huh. I was fortunate enough to live in one of the painted ladies on Alamo Square, yeah. and the show just uh, became out of. Well, that's a TV business. set. Yeah, it actually it is, and it's just so you know quintessential San Francisco, and I think that the city just has such style and panache with its food, and people people love their food in San Francisco. Absolutely. But, you know, I'm not a, a classically trained chef. I'm somebody who throws parties. So right. the show's called Entertaining People, and we teach you how to throw a party worry free every time. Yeah, well, let's, you know, let's also give a shameless plug not only to uh, entertaining people, but you've done a lot of work for uh, the HIV AIDS community and the LGBT community. Yeah, we were on the front lines in the early days, mm -hmm. and I, I always feel like I'm not there enough and now that uh, that there is a platform I, I absolutely feel very responsible you know to use it I'm always uh, always uh, willing to donate the free commercial time and, yeah. and do what we can do it's changed a lot it's yeah. changed a lot but one thing that has stayed constant is you know great wine by the way you will be here oh, all day thank you so this is the new release yeah. of uh, Porter State Vineyards and this is what I'm calling a Vion Vert it's a Viognier mixed with a Chenin Blanc mm -hmm. and the Vert is the French word for glass so tell me what you think very simple. Mm, yeah. So here's going to be my point today as we're talking. Don't be fussy over your wine. Well, I like the fact that I see ice buckets on the table. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hit you up. So have a bite of anything. I brought you some prosciutto wrapped parm. We can have a bite of that. And these I made for you last night. These are a corn muffin and a jalapeno in mm. duck fat. No, I'm so ha have a little one, and we can just sit and talk about you know. Well, what's, I mean, you know what's going on. And duck these have, fat and these have. Hold on a second. A little slice of white chocolate is mm. baked into those. So you have to eat that together. So is there some law that you shouldn't have sweet and savory together? I disagree. All the laws have changed. All the rules have changed. And I think, you know, wine should be accessible. Everything that I'm going to put out, even like talking with your mouthful, right. is going to be between $9.99 and $19.99 a bottle. You know, I think I, everything has changed. I had Nobody so should feel intimidated Yeah, I mean, anymore. I had a very fussy uh, winemaker in Napa Valley once tell me that any bottle of wine under... Uh, $15 hasn't seen oak and isn't worth it. But I don't think that's true, do you? Some of my best parties have been on $2 wines, and I, I think it should be accessible. Mm. I, you know, mm. it's like let them eat cake. You can go savory. It's kind of like life. Uh, I think if you just are unintimidated and yeah. follow the dream. Well, and have fun. The, the dream might well, be Well, it was like you were saying about uh, raising awareness and raise funds. The best way to do that is raising a glass. I think so. I think whether you have a fun, you know, we do one episode about um, fundraising mm. at, a, at a charity event because I think it's great to be out in the town. If you're throwing maybe a birthday party, mm -hmm. pick a favorite restaurant, buy a table for 10, raise some money. Corkage is one of the best things. You know, most restaurants in San Francisco allow you to pay a separate fee, which you should, by the way, because you're using their stemware. Mm -hmm. and their glasses but you know uh, I love I was just at a fundraiser in the Castro the other night and I love mm -hmm. how it was just for one individual and they were just raising money and mm -hmm. uh, that's one thing that San Francisco has always done. Now you say that you're not a classically trained chef. I'm not. When did you realize that you had a not only a gift for gab but a <laughs> gift for uh, for you know throwing great parties? My first food memories honestly I come from a restaurant family but I could never do it and my parents couldn't afford babysitters, so they would send us to the kitchen, and they didn't like us, so they put my brother and I in the walk-in with the door open, and we would sit on five-gallon tubs of crab uh -huh. and eat them, and I would watch the chefs flip, and right. I would watch how happy everybody was when they would come in and out of the kitchen and my grandmother, and so once I realized that I think you could make people happy with food, I knew... I knew it was something for me to do. Yeah, so. I mean, my, my, my grandmother, who raised me in Richmond, Virginia, Virginia almonds, always said the that the best definition of a good party is the most people in the most crowded space possible. And I remember that was always her kitchen. Do yeah. you think people have gotten less fussy now about having parties in the kitchen? I know that's where my husband and I often yeah. in entertain people, is just in the kitchen. I think we should do it. And, you know, again, mm. one of the segments that Garland. we do in every one of our, yeah, and there's some cayenne in that, some just almonds. So, again, you can try, but here, I'm going to get you hooked up. There's nothing like a little individual ice bucket, and I'm one of the ones who break all the rules. But let me tell you something. Yeah, yeah. Now, we're gonna move, I'm going to move you to the rosé. 
Rosé is if something you, that I think a lot of people don't appreciate. My husband from Spain. Americans don't. Americans don't, but in Europe, they, first of all, they're not afraid to put ice in wine. Absolutely. And they're not afraid to try a rosé, whether it's hot summer or even cool in the fall. Yeah, well, you wonder how they can sip it all day and still uh, still keep it going. Mm -hmm. I have a dear friend in the south of France, and that's where I learned this. And this is 100% mm -hmm. Grenache. It's fantastic, but we're making this out of the El Dorado foothills right here in California. And it's what I call a Frenchy Frenchy, but you're going to remember that if you like the Spanish. Mmm. So now it's let's get some sweet. savory. You've got some savory with that. Now how about a candied almond? Well, I've had and I've had and then, the uh, and a slice of uh, here. I'm going to do it for you if you don't okay. like, don't my hands. A little slice of parm. But you know, back to your point about kitchen entertaining. One of the segments on every one of my shows is how do you change out a room? And one mm. of them we have, we, we turn our, t our kitchen into a tapas bar. We take a family room, we turn it into a wine country crush. We take a deck and we do a point raise crab feed. So we've got all these great little design tips on how you can just add a few elements, cheap dime store stuff, mm -hmm. turn over a room, and menu plan it from the beginning to the end so your guests really have a great time. And the end of the story is the kitchen is the heart of the home. And it always has been for centuries and centuries. Mm. And I think that, see, what we're doing is we have no plan here. And this is what I want. But it looks fabulous. But I want viewers to know that this is a basic chopping block. We've got brownies. We have some nuts. We have some sweet, some savory. Don't be intimidated. Mm -hmm. I always say, cook what you love to eat, eat what you love to cook. You'll right. never, you'll never go wrong. What do you think is one of the basic mistakes That's that nice, people huh? make when they? Uh, yeah, it's a good sound bite. What do you think is one of the basic mistakes people make when they set up to entertain? They spend too much. They spend too little. They worry too much. I mean, is. Is there anything that's consistent with uh, yeah, first time? Yeah, there is. Host? Absolutely. Never do anything for the first time when you're entertaining. Make sure it's something that you know, that you've done. If it's a new recipe, so nice. test that out. Amer right here from the El Dorado Foothills. I love it that mm -hmm. we're, we're able to you know, keep Americans employed and, and drink great wine. I think that most people overthink it. I think that your guests don't know the difference, and your real friends aren't going to care. They're right. not going to care. I mean, my father used to spill the red wine on the white tablecloth all the time. We had a friend who did that to make people comfortable. So I think people. Uh, um, plan too much and they don't plan ahead. If right. you see my refrigerator when I entertain or do a large party, it's pretty much staged three days out. Every shelf of my refrigerator is a different course mm -hmm. and you just post-it notes are, are wonderful and cheat sheets and I think what you need to do is get enough ready so that you can be there for your guest, right. not be there throwing the party. Right. So make it simple. Now Keep it simple. Now, having said that you think a lot of hosts and certainly maybe first-time party planners mm -hmm. think it too much, you have given us a way for people to, uh, to learn yeah. from past mistakes. This is the companion cookbook to the last four years of the show, Parties and Celebrations. Parties and Celebrations. People. So whether it's a... Uh, you know, a wine country crush, or whether it's mac and cheese three ways. Right. Uh, there's everything from the beginning to the end to how to uh, slide a great napkin ring and turn something up. So mm -hmm. you'll see that out on entertainingpeople.com, and um, also all these all these wines as well. You know, m my husband is one of those people like you that loves to cook, and it actually relaxes him. The yeah. idea of cooking makes therapy. me it's therapy, yeah. uh, and he can actually follow a recipe. But what I found is, after he's made something two or three times, mm -hmm. I see the recipe book. Yeah. disappear and it becomes their own. Well, that, mm -hmm. That's what I call underhand. Mm -hmm. So when you're entertaining, cook what you know. Cook what was given to you. And by the way, you'll always know what you're, what's good for you to cook because it's what you love to eat. Right. You'll be able to correct the flavors on your own. Use your recipe <laughs> as, I use recipes for time and temperature, some consultation things, you know. I'm not a real big baker, so I don't measure. Right. And I think that really the secret is just to stick to what, if you were at a restaurant, what would you order? If you have a mm -hmm. memory, my whole show, my slogan is from a memory you can make a memory. So everything is right. just one great vacation, one night on a beach. Now, everything you've got here on this cutting board is bite size. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that purposeful? I mean, I've gone to some parties where they will serve something that's so big and so, so unwieldy, I don't know how to eat it, and like, I feel embarrassed. Like the chow mein noodles yeah. in the middle. And that's fun, and it's stylized, and I have a lot of admiration for people who can do that. That's not my food. And I think at the end of the day, people are more impressed just having it accessible. Right, and, right. And, you know, kick it up with the candles. Kick it up with other stuff. Yeah. And make sure there's lots of napkins and ask your friends if they have broccoli in their teeth because that's <laughs> what they're worried about. It really, it really is that simple. So ice in the wine, why not, right? right? The whole rest of the world's been doing it. You know it from Spain. And I think... Um, 
San Francisco is just is just you know they just grasp every every part of it. So talk to me a little bit about these grapes because these are adorable. These are champagne. This is what champagne is made of. Ah, you see, and I uh-huh. should know that as a gay oh, no, man, and I really. don't. <laughs> but so you, but you, you don't you see them often. Like a great shot. Yeah, no. but you don't see them served often uh, on a, a buffet table. Yeah, for a party. and you know what? These are available at just local purveyors right at any local store. That's one of the also here on the. West and so Coast. you would just ask for champagne grapes. They're they're right on the shelf. They're right on the shelf. But taste that. Isn't that sweet? Mm-hmm. And it's sweet, and it's yeah. it's a little burst it's of a little sweetness. Sexy. Yeah. It's a little sexy. I mean, if you really want to do some drama, you could actually hang one in a glass mm-hmm. and serve that to your guests like that. Right. Um, I'm just think to I'm going to steal that idea. Just to yeah. give it, it's, they're here to steal. They're here to steal. Now, you said that you're not a big baker, but these muffin things are amazing. That honestly was 3.30 in the morning. I probably should have written it down. It's a little cornmeal. I had some jalapenos because I wanted to show you that you can go spicy. And, mm-hmm. and sweet, too. Yeah, and there is a chunk of white chocolate baked in there. Three eggs, that was it. I threw them in some some mini muffins very, very late, thinking Mm -hmm. I should bring something. So my point is, don't be fussy over it. Enjoy it. If you're a $5 bottle of wine guy, buy five bottles. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't worry about it. If you want to have that special one, I will tell you something personally. I was a collector for quite some time, and then September 11th happened, and I looked at that cellar, and I thought, what are you doing? Drink Drink the wine. Drink the wine. I mean, we're here, and and there we in San Francisco. We have so many things in the LGBT uh, community to be thankful for, and so many things to celebrate on a daily basis. And hopefully, some really big things coming up as yes. far as the community is concerned yeah. globally. Open the wine. Drink the wine. Private right. label some wine. Right. You know, have some fun. Now, what is this? Uh, these little prosciutto. So, so there's, a, there's a there's a par- there's a parmesan wrap, and that is a prepackaged. I'm always adding homemade stuff with prepackaged because who has the time mm-hmm. anymore? And you can find that at any local store that you walk in 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 the deli case. Quick, I just cut them in thirds, and I figured so I'd brush a napkin. So you're not afraid of doing some prepackaged stuff oh with gosh. some original? What I can do with a deli chicken. What, what anybody <laughs> can. Yeah, cut it in half. Yeah, what, This is life. I mean, we all. there's no reason why we shouldn't enjoy the right, kitchen right. party. Don't you have the neighbor that stops by, you open the bottle of wine, and then it's like, well, let's have something to eat. Yeah. It's all a part of it. To me, that's entertaining people. Now, we've only got a few moments left, but let's I think there's the one more thing let's you wanted the, us the, the to... Big uh, daddy. All right, so this is what I'm calling my no reservations red. All right, this is a big... A big boy and one of the things mm. I just want to quickly show you if you're ever in a restaurant and you've got a bottle of red mm-hmm. you'll this will blow your waiter's mind I'm going to show you how to decant it just take a regular dinner fork and pour the wine right over the floor right over it's it. going to break poor the man's oxygen decanning. poor man's decanning and set it down and your server will say well, last few do? moments okay let's go here we thank go you. The chocolate chocolate mm-hmm. and dolce oh and everyday red thank you we've been drinking and eating with Porter we'll have him back for holiday tips for entertaining I'm David Perry We'll see you next week on 10%.